Around about a third of people uh, go to see their doctors and they actually, when they go to see their doctors, it's, it's not actually for a clinical issue. It's actually for an underlying social issue, like debt, unemployment or social isolation. There's a growing movement at the moment that's looking to mainstream social prescribing that's going to tackle this head on. And I'm here today to share with you why it's so important. I'm going to start off with one of my favorite childhood stories, the magic stone, stone soup story, some people might know it as. And this is a story of where there's a man and he's looking for shelter and food and he's in the woods and he calls to the door of an elderly woman and she says, no, sorry, don't have anything, can't help you out on your way. And he says, oh, that's a pity, that's a pity because I make the most fantastic stone soup. And she said, right, uh, tell me a bit more about that. And she went and got a pot and she got some water and he put the stone into the water and it was bubbling away and she, he tasted it and she said, well, and he says, just needs a little bit of carrot. And she said, I think I might have a bit of carrot actually. So she went and got some carrot and brought it and he tasted it again and she says, well, and he said, just needs a bit of onion. She said, I've got a bit of onion too. So she went and got the onion. So you guessed it. She's backwards and forwards. She's bringing everything out of the cupboards. For someone that had nothing, there was everything there. And it's a great story because at the end, you see them enjoying this great big bowl of healthy, hearty soup. And uh, she even lets them stay over. She sleeps on the chair. He sleeps on her, in her bed. And the next day as he's leaving, it's a great image, I'll never forget it. And it's, it's, he's leaving and he's all proud of himself and he's left her with the stone and she's got the stone in her hand and she kind of looks down and she says, all oh, right, I was had. And she literally, the last page is her throwing the stone and it's just inches away from his head. But it's a great story. It's a story about untapping resources. It's a story about time banking really, when you think about it. You know, she had the ingredients, he was able to cook the meal. And it's a story about building your social networks. Um, and it really makes me think of my time when I was working in the, in the community and voluntary sector. And I had to run a digital skills program. And my target was 500 people, get them online. Okay, right, what have I got here? What, is it, what, what are you giving me here? Is there any marketing budget? Oh no, sorry, there's, there's nothing. So I thought, right, okay, let's, how am I gonna do this? So first of all, I spoke to principals in schools, I spoke to community leaders, I found spaces, I found rooms. Then I got 20 laptops from the local regional college and I got the 20 tutors as well to help me. So I started, you know, the resources were building up and then I had to look at how to get the people. So again, no marketing budget, but I had my computer and I was making little posters and I was putting these posters up in chip shops, in health centers, in job centers, wherever I could find a board where I thought people would be, I would put these, um, they would put these up here. And what I was doing was um, I ended up getting some childminders involved as well because a lot of people would have wanted to go on these courses but would have had kids. So building up everything together and then it was just a matter then of, of putting the ads out there and seeing who was interested. I put ads in the parish bulletin too. So Sundays the phone was off the hook. Everyone was ringing. I couldn't believe it. It was really, it was getting to people and people were like, oh, I've seen, I want to learn how to use Skype. Um, my, my partner's just died. I, you know, I need to connect in more. And then I had people who were like, look, um, I'm wanting to find work. I need to learn how to use Word and Excel. So it's like, brilliant. The reason it was so successful, it was on their doorsteps. It was in familiar surroundings. They didn't have to go into a big shiny building to do it. It was, it was in places that were close to them and at times that was relevant to them and suited them. And it was fantastic. It went really, really well uh, to the point that people were like, what's the next course? You know, you could just see the whole, when you walked into the room and you could see people there and they, they were making friends. And if someone, now if someone wasn't there for a couple of weeks, I used to get the register sent to me. So I would give them a little ring and say, everything okay and you know it might be someone who said oh look I didn't think I could go back because I haven't been there in a while and I might have missed something and I would say no 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 they've all been asking for you they've actually said it's, it's your turn to buy the buns next week so you have to come back in for the class but it was great but what I noticed was whilst it was fantastic there were still people who weren't there that needed to be there and I would see maybe a young mother walking past with her pram and her kids and I was thinking how do we get her in how do we get her to experience this 
And that's where the challenges started. And I, 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 even the fact that we'd worked so well together to, to get the, the message out there to so many people, there were still people that were left behind. And I thought, right, that's something I want, I want to do something about that. So fast forward a few years, and I'm working in the community sector again, and I meet this girl called Leanne Monk. Leanne Monk is a community development worker in Craigan, and she's been running fantastic programs for people in Craigan. And people with COPD, with oxygen tanks, are doing exercise in her center. It started out like a little porta cabin, and she built this massive big center for long-term conditions, applying for funding applications, and just, again, looking for resources that are out there and building something for people in their own community. And her and I were in the same meeting, and I had a diagram that I was using, and I using the diagram and someone said that's a great diagram and I said I, I love diagrams and she said I love diagrams too <laughs> and that was the moment it was like whoa we love diagrams and I got chatting to her and she had the same frustrations as I had she was saying you know how can we better connect this up because we need to connect the doctors the social workers the community providers and we need to connect them around the people because the people, they don't know all the things that are happening and they want to do something about their health and there's other people who don't want to do something about their health, but how do we bring them along? So we came up with an idea and this was a great idea that we thought, like, let's, it's like match.com for health improvement and it's going to connect everything up. So we're going to have the person and we're going to have the activity and we're just going to connect it up together. So we thought, let's pitch this idea. So we went along to a competition and we stood up and we got our t-shirts printed and we got a video made and this was the moment we were going to share this idea with everyone and everyone was going to think this was amazing. And uh, we stood up on the stage, the video didn't work. And the first question that the judges asked us was, what is it exactly that you're doing? So we were absolutely gutted. We were like, oh, we didn't get the message across properly. Um, my mum said, oh, I thought you were great. And we were like, well. <laughs> And we were so gutted, and obviously we didn't win, so the judges had chosen this other guy, and he won. But unbeknown to us, he totally got what we were doing. And he called us up, and he said, look, I believe so much in what you're doing, in that I want to give you the prize. And it was 500 pounds, and it was three months incubation space to test our idea and develop it. So all of a sudden, it wasn't just our mums that thought it was a great idea, and us, someone else did too, and someone believed in us. So then we decided, right, let's do something with this. So we looked at the social prescribing model of care. Someone had said, actually, guys, what you're doing, it's called social prescribing. It's been around for years. It's actually the community development approach to health and well-being. And we thought, ah, right, we've actually been doing this. This is, you know, this is our thing. But when we looked into it further, we noticed that it was mainly paper-based. It was relying on a, on a GP to pick up the phone and phone a place and say, oh, I've got someone here that's really interested in, in joining the class. And there was just so many times throughout that process that that person might not end up in that activity, in that program that they so much wanted to do. So we thought, it's 2013. It was a year of city of culture. There was a real digital revolution happening in our city at the time, and we thought, let's see if we can bring digital into this. Digital has a role to play in it. It can't be the dominant force, but it has a role to make this whole process a lot smoother so that that person can actually take action and they can do something about their health and well-being. Now, big point being that we weren't techies at all. So we were like, I thought Java was a coffee, for goodness sake. <laughs> It was, how are we going to do this? So we managed then to, again, it was looking at the resources around you, and we found the most amazing software developer, and we shared with him our, our journeys, our user journeys, we want to do this, and then it needs to go like that. So then he helped us develop this platform. And what was happening was that when a person went in to see their GP, the doctor then could say to them, look, I think a, a referral, instead of medication, I think you need a referral to be able to get out there in the community more. And the person would say, yes, I, I would like that. And our, our software would be able to make that whole process seamless so that then they could go and spend time with the community development worker and sit down and look at the range of things that were happening. Everything from swimming classes, there was dancing, there was learn to Skype. It was all happening, gardening classes, everything. And that time that person could see where their health risk was at the moment and they could make their choices and they would be supported. Like I did with the phone call after the two weeks if someone wasn't attending, they would be supported 
every month they could see their health risk reducing. And what a ma an amazing opportunity that would be for someone to actually see the impact that it was having on their life. We're connecting people up with physical activity, diet, nutrition, mental health support. And it's now, it's, it's been recognized that it's not just that that's important as well. There's debt advice, there's housing support. There's housing associations that are getting their housing officers to sit with people who maybe need some more support than what they're getting at the moment and connect them up into their communities as well. Five years on, social prescribing is everywhere. There's not a week when you don't see it in the press and the newspapers. And it talks about the impact that gardening has and, and art classes have on people's mental health and well-being. So there's so many great things that are happening. National policy has caught up as well, which is great. It's been written into programs and plans. The NHS is now making money available for social prescribing too, to be able to support the voluntary community and social enterprise sector. So there's a real buzz what's happening at the moment. Pilot programs are getting extended. You've got uh, Dr. Mohan and Wideway Medical Center in Merton, and you've got Ray and Clara, the two social prescribers, and their program has been extended so that they can help more people and be able to signpost them into their communities. This is a great example in Glasgow of um, over 60 year olds are able to go to daytime discos and they're go able to go to climbing walls as well. And it's thanks to PASNA and the weekend wow factor and they're doing fantastic work. You've also got the fantastic guys in Alvaney GP practice in Stockport. They have vegetable on prescription. They also have uh, the walk with your local health champion. So they go out walking as GP practice with all their patients together. And they have a sing-along group that meets in a cafe as well. And it's become so popular that it's standing room only. You've also got the likes of the guys down in the Bogside and Brandywell Health Centre. They are doing, they've got their men's shed and they are building furniture and they are able to um, get that used in the local community as well. And they're playing cards too sometimes. And then you've got the likes of the TVC. They are fantastic. They are the conservation volunteers. They are out and about and getting people with a purpose and they're outdoors and they're getting their hands dirty and planting trees and renovating areas. And it's been proven to be having a great impact on anxiety and stress. And then in Halton, when new mums get it, there's a thing called the baby box and it's from Finland. So when new mums get their baby box, they're being signposted to breastfeeding support, uh, parent support and financial support as well. So the midwives are making the social prescriptions for them. So what about Leanne and I's journey in this? This is five years on. Uh, our own, well, that's not us by the way, but it's, uh, <laughs> that's, what, that's what we want to be like actually. Our own, our own mental and physical health, it has taken its toll, I will be honest. Um, it's all good coming up with the idea, but when you try to execute it and develop it and take it somewhere, you know, you just have to forget about your own kind of mental health and well-being. But the good news is last week we, we joined the gym and there's yoga classes that are in the community center that we're gonna start going to next week. So we're back on it again and we're like, yeah, we really need to be healthy and happy ourselves. Um, so yeah, and there's also, there's a, a mini triathlon that's happening too. So my mum and my aunts, we're all, we're all gonna join that as well. So Leanne and I have built our headquarters in Derry and we have 10 people working for us. We have another four people that are coming on over the summertime. Uh, 35,000, around 35,000 people this year will receive social prescription referrals via our digital platform, Elemental. Uh, we were in Dubai and we helped Dubai Health Authority set up their happiness prescribing program. And that's where they prescribe happiness and, their, and health and they're tackling type 2 diabetes over there. Uh, they have a health minister and a health agenda, it's, it's fantastic. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's going really well. Uh, just recently we won a tender to help the Mayor of London to develop his social prescribing strategy as well. So yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's going well, but we just need to just keep getting the message out there. And I've, I've got an ask of you today. And uh, the first thing is it's World Health Day today. So I want to say to all of you, if there's something that you've been thinking about doing, if you've seen something on a notice board and thought, oh, I'd love to do that. Or if you've seen people out walking and thought, I wish I could do that, do it. Make today the day that, that you decide, right, I'm gonna do it. 
The second thing I want you to do is to talk to your GPs about social prescribing. I want the conversation to keep going. Just keep it out there. Talk to GPs, talk to your social workers, housing officers, and just let's try and mainstream, mainstream social prescribing. And then the third thing is, I think, collectively, to see what we can do to help support the voluntary community and social enterprise sector, because they really are going to be critical in social prescribing, and we need to help them. So our vision, to finish off, is that it will be equally likely for you to be prescribed an art class or gardening as it would be a pill. And wouldn't that be a wonderful thing?